Ladies and gents, boys and girls, hello and welcome to Rider Guider. I'm Neil, your host for today's shenanigans. I am holding a lithium iron battery, which I am today going to install on my beautiful Yamaha Tenere 700. Now, it's going to be a four part series. There's no point in rushing through a review on a battery unless we give it a good test and discuss performance. Today, all we're going to do is basically look at the features and benefits of this particular brand that I've bought, the Anti-Gravity ATZ10. It is, for all intents and purposes, a straight swap with the standard lead acid item in the bike. Now, um, there are features and benefits that really tempted me to buy this particular one over other lithium batteries, which we'll discuss shortly. Parts two, three, and four of this series in three, six, and 12 months, we'll look at the performance, compatibility issues, whether I've had any electrical issues with the T7, and we'll go from there. Let's crack on and look at the features and benefits of this right now. Let's have a look initially at the weight because that's what people seem to be interested in and then I'm going to put that little thing to bed because it means zilch nothing. UASA standard battery out of the T7 from new. Good grief that's 3,123 grams 3.1 kilos you wouldn't believe that could actually weigh that much but it does. This thing Anti-gravity, lithium-ion battery. Look at that, 973 grams. Quite astonishing. So we're looking at a 2.15 kilogram saving in weight. Realistically, let's put that into perspective. If you've got a 200 kilogram bike, 1% lighter means jack diddly squat. You're not going to notice it. You're not going to notice it if your bike falls over and you're picking it up. You're not going to notice it while you're riding it. Don't care what you say. 1% means nothing. One day you could be 1% stronger than the day previous and you will still then be able to pick your bike up. Okay? It doesn't really make the slightest bit of difference. The thing I'm talking about here though is a cumulative saving of weight. If you're in a competition and you're wanting to save as much as you possibly can, I understand that's you know you're on a, you're on a, a race bike and you're looking to you know do Dakar or whatever you want. As, uh, it's minimal gains, isn't it? It's what we're talking about. And for me and for every, every general man in the street, it's not required. Okay, I can put a four kilogram lighter Acropovic exhaust on this bike, which I will because they look pretty. Nothing to do with the weight savings. It's not going to make the slightest bit of difference. It'll sound nice. I might put the exhaust on and I'll have a bit of a weight saving. But let's be honest, my bike, I've added crash bars, bar busters, every deal with bash plate, rad guards, adventure mirrors, I've got GPS, camera equipment and the relative mounts, I've got the quad lock wireless charger, I've got the tools, the compressor, the centre stand. My bike will weigh more now with that fitted, the new battery, an Acropovic exhaust when I do it than what it did when I rode it out of the showroom. As an example, here is my solo seat. Let's just zero the scales and I'm not going to show you this but I don't need to but I'll tell you what it weighs. Put my old man's eyesight on. Well that's at 818 grams. Not heavy. I'll replace it with this and it's got the compressor under the seat as well fastened to it what does that weigh a kilogram more 1933 grams so that's already despite losing two kilograms there i've added a kilo on straight away just by adding that so i've cancelled it out the weight a little bit lower down but it doesn't mean jack so realistically the weight saving is such a minimal thing it looks pretty it's it's a cool item but if you're going to buy a lithium battery for weight saving, forget it. Real, real world terms, it means nothing. Um, it's not worth it. 
if you just want to save weight unless you look at taking everything else off your bike and you're just trying your very best to make the bike as light as possible because you're riding through a desert i understand that but for every man man in the street and a woman pff, don't bother if it's just the weight and the reason i've bought this is well there's a couple of reasons first of course the aforementioned electricals i've got my quad lock wireless charger i've got garmin zumo i've got the Innov K3 linked to my battery, plus a few other things. I've also got the, um, well, I'll be doing this today. I'll be, I've got a new um, battery charger because of course it's got to be specific to lithium iron. So I'll be fastening these. And what I'm doing here is adding more and more things to what would have been just two terminals. This anti-gravity battery, check that out. We've got four terminals, two positive, two negative. So it's given me the option to add more things. I'll make a neater job and deal with my OCD than having everything piggybacking off the two terminals. That is a massive plus for somebody like me who likes my wiring nice and neat, etc. Having double terminals on that battery is gold. It's given me a lot more space to spread things out and I'll make sure I get better connections for my electricals. We all do it. We all add things to our bikes. That's what I'm doing it for. The other thing, not as important, um, is the cranking uh, ability for the battery to start your bike. It's not as important in a warm climate. I'm in Australia, so it's not one of the reasons why I bought the bike specifically it's nice to have that extra performance we do get cold winters but i can't really see it being a major issue to me going forward um finally the main reason for me is having all these extra little electrical items on the bike there is a um, what is termed as a parasitic drain i think it's the, ter the, the terminology for it is on the batteries um, I have had on occasion because I've got the quad lock, I've got the GPS, I've got various things attached to the battery even when they're powered down they will drain your battery if your bike's parked up for any length of time you've got a risk and it's happened maybe two or three times since I bought the T7 that I've ended up without a battery uh, or with not enough power to start my bike I've gone click and nothing it's so frustrating especially on something where it happens where you, you're not, nowhere near the top of a hill it's hard to jump start bump off a 700cc twin cylinder 210 220 kilogram bike on a hot day you're stuck you're ringing the RAA or the AA or the RAC wherever you are in the world and what can you do with the anti-gravity battery one of the main features that I liked was if I do end up with a parasitic drain and I end up with a low battery, this overrides it. It's got called it's got something called restart, and it will detect when it gets to a certain level of power within the battery structure. It will cut off. It will stop any parasitic drain. Period. You'll come to your bike, and you'll press your button, and it won't start. However, it will have saved some power enough to start your bike there's a button on top you press the restart button bang it will start your bike that is a good feature for me in the meantime of course i will be um trying of course to plug in and keep it trickle charged anyway that's it for now um quickly before we do move on let's just move that box out of the way here you will see i have got a buttload of rider guider stickers now if you've got a Tenere, let me know. A T7. I've got some Rider Guider T7 stickers. I haven't got many of them left. I've got a load of the old school, old style Rider Guider stickers. Send me an email. The Rider Guider at gmail.com. I'll put the email on the screen with your address and name. And I'll send you a sticker or two. I've also got an Instagram. Um, I'll put the link up for that as well on the screen if you don't want to email me just send me a instant message or a PM as we call it and we will of course get your address that way and I'll send you some stickers that will be awesome 
and that is it thank you very much for all the views and subscribers especially comment give us a thumbing and keep coming back this is part one done of the anti-gravity battery we'll be back for part two in three months time approximately we'll do another one part three six months again like i said just to do a review and see how the battery is performing and if it's affected anything else on the bike and then we'll do it again in a year so that will end up being a four-part series thanks for joining me we'll see you on the next one cheers